A reading from the 46th Psalm. Listen now for the word of God. For the choir director, a song of the descendants of Korah to be sung by soprano voices. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. So we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains crumble into the heart of the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble with tumult. Selah. There is a river whose streams bring joy to the city of God, the sacred home of the Most High. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations fall into chaos and kingdoms crumble. God's voice echoes and the earth melts. The God of angel armies is here among us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, see the glorious things God has done. God plants flowers and trees all over the earth and makes wars cease, the ends of the earth. God breaks the bow and snaps the spear God burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. Selah. Be still and know that I am. Selah. Be still and know. Selah. Be still. Selah. Be. Selah. I am above the politics of nations. I am above everything on earth. God of angel armies is here among us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah. So my wrist says, be still. My two favorite scriptures are, be still and know that I am God. And also, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. And I just, I really think that, you know, Jesus says over and over again that the kingdom of God is within. I think that nobody needs advice. Everybody has the answers because we all have the same amount of God inside of us. And so, really the only advice I offer is be still. If you get quiet enough, you will know. You'll know what to do next. You'll know you're enough. You'll know it's all unfolding as it should. And um, I will tell you that I have a little girl who's a complete rule follower because in my family, in order to rebel, you follow all the rules. And um, she said, Mom, why'd you get that tattoo on your wrist? And I said, because be still, is it's something really important that I have to remind myself of every day because I forget. And she said, oh, well, you should just get a notebook. Mm-hmm. So I wish I had thought of that first. Mm-hmm. But now it's with me. And I mean, it just reminds me, it reminds me when I'm so mad at the person in front of me in the grocery line or when I'm in traffic or whenever um, I have an extra second to just take a breath and be still. It reminds me too of the rhythm of a spiritual life, which I think is the same rhythm as creative life. I'm actually about to get here I am on this wrist because for me, um, the spiritual life has such a rhythm of quiet time where you hear what you need to hear and then the time where you go and you act it out. And then you come back and hear what you need to hear and then you go out again. And that's sort of the yin and yang of spiritual life. And for me, in my creative life, it's so important because I would just be still all the time if it were up to me. I would never leave my house. 
since I'm a raging introvert and I would borderline on hermit. And so I have to remind myself that there is a time to show up, that you may stay with God and then you have to go with God. <laughs> and then you have to come back to the stillness. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, God, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. So just stop. Be still for one moment. Can you do it? Can you actually sit perfectly still. Every morning I can hear myself saying over and over again, be still, as I stalk my daughter through the house with a hairbrush trying to comb a moving target. And I'll say it to my son, who can never seem to sit still and eat a meal, so he leaves a trail of breadcrumbs all over the house. And I'm sure I was the same as a kid always fidgeting and fiddling and making strange noises. But it isn't just children who have difficulty being still. When we become adults, however, that fidgeting and wandering just moves inside. At least it does for me. I don't know about you, but I may look still on the outside, but my mind is running all over the place. At any given time, I will be juggling three to-do lists, four different worries, and at least two daydreams, one of which is always along the theme of what I should have said was. <clears throat> and my mind will incessantly flip between these channels, list, daydream, worry worry, daydream, list. In the same way we used to flip through TV stations. Remember live TV um, when nothing good was on? Or the same way I will now flip through TikTok reels, never resting on anyone for more than a moment or two. Flipping, swiping, moving on. The Buddhists call this monkey mind because the mind tends to mischievously swing from tree to tree and limb to limb. But here's the thing, monkeys don't actually have monkey minds. When they play, their mind is playing. When they eat, their mind is eating. And when they fight, their mind is fighting. Unlike us, their minds show up to the present moment. They live squarely within the divine flow of created things, the flow of birds migrating, rivers running, and clouds unfolding across the sky. But somewhere east of Eden, we humans lost our sense of this flow, this rhythm, and our tempo started speeding up, and it got rushed especially as we became adults. And one day we realized we were spending most of our time in the past or in the future, either wandering around the past, replaying regrets or nostalgic reruns, or running ahead to the future, rehearsing worries or fantasies of what might be. So when we're taking a shower, our mind isn't actually taking the shower. When we're drinking coffee, our mind is not drinking coffee. And when we are walking the dog, our mind is not walking the dog. And so we live as if we are sleepwalking, missing out on the warmth of a shower, the aroma of fresh coffee, and the beauty of a new day dawning on our walk. 
days, weeks, even whole lifetimes slip by like sand through an hourglass, slipping away because we're too busy sleepwalking, too busy juggling, channel surfing, scrolling, worrying, wondering, ruminating, but not living. And nothing turns us into sleepwalkers more than anxiety, that voice that whispers, you are not safe. No one is looking out for you. You're alone. No one really knows you. You're not good enough. You're not loved. Now let's be clear. I do not believe in what our culture characterizes as the devil, that horned goblin with the pitchfork and the red tights, which is more reminiscent of the Greek god Hades than anything else. And to me, this is idolatry because it creates a system of two warring gods. But what I do believe is this. There exists an absence of light and truth and it seeps its way into us through our fear, feeding us these lies. The voice of truth, however, sings a different song. Like the psalmist this morning sings, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Know that I am God. You are not God. I am am. So you don't have to play God. You don't have to work that shift any longer. You can just be still. You can be still living in this moment, trusting that I will take care of tomorrow. Tomorrow is in my hands. Today's trouble is enough for today. So be still. Be still and know that I am. I am here and I am now. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday's stories helped make you who you are, but you don't need to keep working on them, keep weaving them and revising them and reviewing them and rereading them. These stories are complete. So you can just be still and hold on to them. Be still and I will do the work of healing. And in Exodus, it says, God will fight for you. You need only to be still. That's all we need to do, be still. So we can put down our swords, our guns, our fighting words and make peace. Be still. And in the Gospels, we remember the story of Jesus, and he's on a boat, and he's caught in the storm, and it's tossed by waves and gusts of wind, and Jesus stands at the bow of the boat, shouting into the wind, quiet, be still. And as the psalmist sang, he made the storms be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. So friends, if Christ can do that, to a surging storm, what more then can he do to our small and restless hearts? And so too, Christ calls into the storms of our lives when we are being tossed about and gripped by fear, saying, be still. And there in him we do find stillness and even salvation. And he showed this way of stillness when he retreated into the desert, when he slipped away on a boat into still waters, when he climbed a mountain, when he kneeled at night in a garden, and he disappeared from the crowds. And he told us to go and do likewise. Be still and know that I am God. And so today, I'm going to invite you to do likewise, here and now together. So I invite you to drop your gaze or close your eyes for a moment. And just notice your breath. You need only to be still. Be still and know that I am God.
and we wait in the stillness, just like we would wait on a train. Imagine you are sitting outside on a platform, a train platform, on a bench beside Jesus, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Together you wait, ears attuned and body still, minds awake, poised, listening for a still, small sound, a sacred voice that could come at any moment. And as certain as the sun, your mind will wander. Thoughts will float through your mind like clouds across the sky overhead. And together, you and Jesus simply note their shape. Perhaps the gray one is a worry. The long one is a regret. Maybe the wispy one is a daydream. But together you sit, listen, and wait. Two changes like the sky above, bright and sunny, or stormy and gray, and you simply note the weather together. It just is. You are still until you hear it that still, small voice making its way to you. What is it saying to you in the stillness? What might God say to you today? train moves on and gently float your eyes back open and congratulate yourself for doing the hard work of contemplative prayer and stillness. May you find these quiet moments in your days to be still with God, to be still and know, be still and know that God is with you. Amen.